Hey, welcome to the show. This episode, we're going to Lake Gunnersville in Gunnersville, Alabama and fish with Lee Pitts. And stay tuned, a little later, we're going to South Carolina to Bell's Marina and see if Rodney and Jordan can kill a nice buck in velvet. Stay with us. You know, I get asked about the road outdoors. What is it? Who started it? And why do you do it? Well, the idea for the Road Outdoors TV show was born in Jacksonville, Alabama. Now, that's a small town roughly 60 miles east of Birmingham. In Jacksonville, things move a little slower than in other parts of the country, but that's why we're here. We love the feel of a cold football Friday night, being with family, hanging out with friends, and of course, being in the woods and on the water. You see, outdoors people in Alabama are lucky. We have the best of all worlds when it comes to outdoor sports like hunting, fishing, camping, hiking, biking. Hey, we can do it all. We have the best fisheries anywhere with the Coosa River Lakes, Lake Gunnersville, which is the bass capital of the world. We have awesome state parks and great land management areas for hunting. You see, our good fortune made us realize that we had an awesome opportunity to showcase our state and to let others know about it too. So one day while we were fishing, we got the grand idea to begin filming an outdoor show about Alabama and more. Now sometimes we're invited to hunt or fish other states, but that only gives us an opportunity to promote our state all over the country. But I'm here to tell you, filming, hunting, and fishing is tough. You got weather problems, equipment issues, it's always something. But that didn't stop us from fighting through all that to bring this show to you. Now we are not professionals, and that will be pretty obvious. We're just a group of goodens that love the outdoors and our beautiful state. Now we will do our best to make this show better and better. So sit back and enjoy. And when the show is over, get up off that couch and go experience the Alabama outdoors for yourself. Hey guys, today we're heading over to Lake Gunnersville in North Alabama. Uh, we've got a big event coming up over there, so we're going to get out and do a little bit of practicing, and we're just going to show you a little bit about some of the things that you need to, uh, you know, think about and, and, and look at and try to, some things that a lot of people take for granted, but just some of the homework that you can do before you ever start a tournament, um, and just some of the things that we try to look at and just make sure you're prepared to go over here and compete. So, hop in and ride with us. and. Maybe we'll find a few fish to try to get a paycheck. What we're going to do today, we're going to come out, look around a little bit, and try to put some ideas together and try to do some different things and just really find out what the fish are doing. It's so much easier for me uh, preparing for an event like this to get out on the water. I've got everything I need in there line uh, equipment, oil for my reels. I can get out there and put all this together and, and kind of tune in a little bit. You know, I'm on a different body of water, so I'm getting out there today to look around and just kind of get, you know, back familiar with some of the areas and just kind of see what the fish are doing. We've had a little bit of a weather change, so we'll get out there with them and just see if we can't put something together because uh, at the end of the week, it's all about that money. Let's go get a check. Here fishing in this grass some of the things that you look for is uh you, you know you got to use your imagination a lot look at these little ambush points right here you got you know there's grass everywhere and all this grass is about the same but if you really think about it you got a tip right here this grass runs out and i know you can't see it on camera but with these coasters i can see it real well out here it comes out to a little tip and then cuts back in real hard that's some of the things that i'm looking for because that's a great ambush point those fish can lay right there off that tip. You got wind blowing in, which has got a lot of current coming through here. And what that does, it funnels those bait fish right through here. So with it hot right now in the heat of summer, those bass can lay right there on that tip and they don't have to exert a whole lot of energy to go out there and chase that bait. They can just lay right there and just pick them off as they come through. So that's, that's some of the things that you look for. Uh, once you catch some fish out there on that tips, then you can go back in there and really, really try to penetrate the heart of it. But uh, I stay out here and look for these good ambush points. A 
lot of my practicing I do more looking you know than anything else it's just like I get out and I mean yeah you can fish hard and you, you can just bear down and just really key yourself but if it's not a productive area so might as well just look and just keep moving until you find a little something then you can go to pecking at it and then there's so many times I'm riding down the lake and I stop somewhere and I have no idea why I stopped. It's just, it's kind of like deer hunting. All of a sudden you say, hey, I'm gonna sit here for a little bit, but just you're riding, looking and something just catches your attention. And that, that's what I'm talking about, kind of getting in tune with everything. The more you get in tune, the more you kind of uh, know what you're looking for and, and know just areas that, hey, this right here is a good little funnel place that comes in. You got some grass that comes out on the point. Yeah, who knows, make bust. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to check on Rodney and Jordan at Bells Marina in South Carolina. The Road Outdoors is brought to you by Deer Creek Cover Sense. Cover your tracks. Coosa Industrial Supply. Your one-stop shop for all your industrial needs. Grow Drugs of Jacksonville. Your hometown pharmacy. After the six-hour long drive, we met up with Gary and TL at Bells Marina to discuss some strategy. TL showed us all of his land and how the deer had been moving. We then started reminiscing about our old hunting stories and of course, to show off all of our deer. The morning of the hunt, we had to make sure our thermocell was working. After that, it was game on. It was time to knock down a big velvet buck. When we first got into the stand, we had a light fog on the first morning. We had three doe walk by us right before daylight, but they had no intention of stopping. Hey, it's opening day, South Carolina. Went out here at TL's place trying to get a little big buck. It's about 66 degrees. Um, it's real nice. We have three does come by this morning. Um, big does. It's too early to get camera light, but uh, we had another doe, single doe. Another big We thought we had a leg up on the deer. In South Carolina, it's legal to hunt over corn, but the deer just didn't seem to want to feed that morning. So Rodney let his inner kid out and began playing games on his phone, but we aren't quite sure he's not a big kid anyway. We decided it was time to come back down and head to Bell's Marina and grab some breakfast and discuss what we should do for that afternoon hunt. Hey, we uh, we come out this morning. We got some quick break breakfast this morning at Bell's Marina. We gonna run in here and hang another set. It's already probably 90 degrees, mosquitoes. Gnats are terrible already, so we're gonna run in and hang a set down in this bottom around the swamp and uh, get out of there as quick as possible. And if uh, we don't do no good this evening on the set we're on, we're gonna come in here in the morning. We seen a lot of deer tracks in here yesterday scouting, so uh, I believe this will be a good set in the morning because they're gonna travel back through this cooler bottom and uh, stay out of this hot sunshine. If you can see, it's nothing but mosquitoes and gnats right now, so. Uh, Y'all hang with us, maybe, maybe old big boy standing in here. We'll get him right now, let's go.
it was time to get back to the Yankee stand. We loaded up once again for a hot afternoon hunt. It wasn't looking real great for us again. As we began to get a little restless, finally we saw some action, but if it was only turkey season. Unfortunately, we did not come away with anything again. The only know we'd get, we still got two more days. It's still hot. It's 82 degrees at dark right now. Had a little storm come through today. Had the deer moving there right at dark with actually getting out of the stand and uh, we climbing down the ladder and had three does come running in on us. Had one doe come across the field on us, got her on film, and uh, several turkeys. This place is loaded up with turkeys, but we're going to go uh, to a different place in the morning called the mechanic shop. He's got a name for everything over here, so maybe that'll bring us different luck. So the next morning we decided we'd head to the mechanic shop. We heard a couple of shots, but it just didn't pan out for us. We are now down to our final hunt of the trip. It's now or never for us. We decided to give the Yankee stand one more try. Early on in the hunt, we had some really nice turkey come in and feed, but then our luck finally started to change. It was prime time and the deer decided it was time to move. A buck just wouldn't walk out for us, unfortunately. We had two more doe walk out just after we ran out of light for our camera. I'm here with Wade. We're down here in South Carolina. He's coming here in this old swamp bottom down here and then killed him one of these big old velvet bucks in South Carolina. What do you think about that, son? I like that. I huh? like it. I love it. Love I it. hear you. Hard horns are velvet. I love it. Hey, a deer is a deer. A deer is a deer. Hey. Yeah. We had a good set this evening too. We seen probably uh, seven or eight does and a bunch of turkeys. So uh, we fixed to go in here and make a recovery on his deer. So y'all come with us. There's the belt. Look at that. That's a good shot, man. I'm going to tell you, that's the first velvet buck I ever laid my hand on. Is that? Yeah. Well, usually Alabama, school. we don't see none of that. Give me a school, man. Right now, they're stripping. They're going to have to pull it out of the... They're going to have to pull it out of the... Unfortunately, we didn't have luck on our side and we came home empty handed, but we had an awesome time in South Carolina. Thank you, Gary and TL. Sometimes life doesn't go as we plan it, especially when it comes to the outdoors. As our two pro staffers are finding out, Rodney's having to deal with a lot of heat, deer aren't moving very well, and Lee gets to his honey hole at Gunnersville and finds out that the weeds have been killed and sprayed. 
So stay tuned and we'll see if they fight through and make it happen. The Road Outdoors is brought to you by Tuttle House of Jacksonville, the best breakfast in town and more. Union Foundry, quality pipe fittings since 1912. Tecamani Seed, grow bigger deer. Alabama bow season is right around the corner. Let's go down to Shotgun Sports Supply and talk to the guys and see what, what we need to be doing to our bows to make sure that we're ready for that opening morning. My name is Arlie Fortner. I'm here at uh, Shotgun Sports Supply here in uh, Anniston, Alabama. And what we're going to go through is, as you bring your bow out this year for hunting season, we're going to talk about things you need to look for and things that you need to check on that you might need to bring your bow by the bow shop and uh, and uh, let us take a look at it and uh, see if you uh, if you got any critical parts on it or not but the things we're going to look at first like this bow we just put a new string and cable on this bow but there's a lot of there's a couple of three real stress points number one on a stress point is where the where your cable not the string but the cable rolls up into the cam if you have separation on your serving and and or or your serving is gone and you're touching your string you have a, a good chance of that cable breaking the other things we want to look for is uh, is just wear and tear on strings and cables a lot of people still shoot uh, arm guards and the reason they shoot arm guard is because the strings hitting their arms so they put arm guard on with your strings running across the arm guard on, down on the bottom of your string you're going to find that you'll get a lot of wear on there a lot of flaring out of the string when you get that what you're going to find is you got a good chance of your string breaking there also and as your bow sets up for a good while then your string sometimes does move a little bit your loops and your peeps everything will be kind of out of place out of position again so it's just a good idea to bring it by a shop and uh, let us go ahead and just tune it. We do that for a, for like a $25 fee, and if we see any other problems, we go from there. Uh, doesn't hurt to put a loop on once a year, at least once every two years. Uh, you need to always lube your axles real good. Always wax your strings down real well. Uh, and that's, that's kind of protection against the weather and the stress and stuff that you're going to give your bow. Because keep in mind, these things stay tight all the time as far as the uh, uh, as far as hunting goes there your bow never relaxes and uh, so we need to always take care of those strings and things and a lot of times in in the hunting season your rest gets a little bit out of place and stuff so we take them down put them back where they need to be line them up carry them in a room we paper tune them so we do everything that we can for you uh, here to get you back off on a good start and if you go ahead and get off on a good start then you don't have all those problems coming and getting your bow sided in getting halfway ready or I'm ready to go and then your string breaks or your fibers start coming off your string so it's a really good idea to bring it by the shop let us take a look at it and we're here at Shotgun Sports and uh, bring it by and we'll be more glad to uh, be more glad to look over it for you. Here at the Road Outdoors we're big supporters of the NWTF and we just want to remind everybody that on November the 6th, the NWTF is having a banquet. It'll be at 6 p.m. It's at the Talladega Super Speedway at the International Sports Hall of Fame. Come join us. The Road Outdoors is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear, trying stuff since 1938. Engel Coolers, a legend in reliability. Muck Boots, Field Logic, featuring the IQ bow sights and block targets. This is Bill Hamlin with Little River Marina Lodge in Cedar Bluff, Alabama, and you're watching The Road Outdoors. Hey, let's head back to Lake Gunnersville with Lee Pitts. You know, a lot of you moms and dads out there, you, you, you got to look at the outdoors as just a another way to stay in touch with your children. Uh, some of my fondest memories uh, of me and my brother growing up uh, is with my dad and, and our hunting and fishing. And, and even with my daughter, I've got a young daughter, Carson, that's at Cherokee County High School right now, which she's 17 years old and, and she's grown. But, uh, you know, some of the memories that I have with, with she and I out there fishing and deer hunting and doing things like that, you know, th those are great memories that you, that you really need to hold on to. And although you think they might not realize it or, or, or really enjoying the participation, later on in life, they do look back on those things and they do appreciate the times that you spent on the water or in the woods. And, and that's what it's all about, you know. If it wasn't for my daughter being okay with me, 
um, in, in my guide service and staying busy and her not getting to go fishing a lot of times in the spring and a lot of my tournaments, you know, we still have our times on the water, but her standing behind me and having faith in me has, has really helped me on those, those tough times. You know, I, I, I go to a lot of these high schools and I talk to these young men and women and, and they ask me uh, not only how they can get involved in these tournaments and the ins and out of bass fishing, but uh, a lot of them have asked me how, how I got started in this. And it's uh, once I left Jacksonville and, uh, and still love to compete, you know, my football days were over. Uh, one of my good friends asked me to come over here to Weiss Lake and fish a little afternoon tournament. And uh, I, I'd fished all my life, always, you know, with my, with my dad and my brother, been involved in hunting and fishing, but I never fished in a, uh, competitive atmosphere and I said yeah I'll come on over and I'll see what it's about so uh, the first tournament I ever fished he and I went out and it was one of those days where I guess the the stress and the pressure really didn't get to me because I didn't know any better but uh, the first tournament I, I ever fished I won and I, I don't know if that's a uh, a good thing or a bad thing but I've been hooked ever since. Some of the things that just your average fun fishermen that go out on weekends and, and fish for fun they don't think about as a tournament angler you've got those days that where you really really key in and you, you tune into your fish and you find an area um, whether it be uh, areas you've known in the past or something you just found but everything just clicks you know you tune in you find what color they want you find what they're holding on what type of grass they're holding in better. Uh, these are some of the things that you know that that really gets your hopes up and when you have those exceptional days and you find little areas like this in your mind you're, you're knowing that you're on the type of fish that is is capable of producing a winning stringer For this event I've got uh, a history there with uh, Lake Gunnersville I've got some knowledge about the lake uh, at times you, you think you don't have any knowledge about some of these places when the fishing's slow but some of the uh, the prep work that I've that I did for this tournament uh, wasn't a whole lot of time. You know, I only had a few days to put something together. Uh, some of the other events that I've got further down the road, once I finish, finish a tournament, finish that event, all my thoughts and all my efforts then go to my next one. Uh, it, it, let's say if it's a month away, I'll start right then when time allows, when I don't have uh, guide trips or I don't have any other obligations, I'm gonna start spending all that time at that lake uh, to, to get familiar with it, learn the ins and outs, learn those little overlooked spots that may not get uh, it, hammered as much as some of those uh, what we call community holes. Today you saw a little insight of kind of what goes through a tournament angler's mind. Uh, you know, we didn't catch a whole lot of fish today, but you got to turn those negatives into a positive and, and you can eliminate some of your waters when you get out and looking around. It's uh, the, the key is to make sure that Saturdays come together for you. It's, it's kind of like you got to think of it as a football team. You know, you've got to put your uh, offense together and you've got to put your play selection together. Same in fishing. You've got to look at some of the positives, some of the negatives, and, and in between that, you've got to put together a game plan. And what you've got to do is put together the areas that are, are productive areas for you because once again, you're not only battling the fish, you're battling that clock too. So. Uh, you've got to get out and put all your efforts and concentrate into all your productive areas that'll give you the opportunity to catch five of them great old big ones. Like we talked about earlier, sometimes things just don't go our way, especially in the outdoors. And that's what happened to Rodney and Lee. But they'll be back and they'll be successful. So just stay tuned. Next week we'll be going to Deer Valley Ranch and we're going to do a little dove shooting. So we're, we look forward to to that and we'll see y'all down the road. Be safe.